With warm days ahead of us, it is time to get ready for cookout season. And if you are a sourdough enthusiast like me, that means it's time to figure out your sourdough hamburger bun recipe. So that's what I'm doing with you today. But rather than giving you a recipe that is tried and true, I want to recipe test with you because I have not quite perfected this yet, but I think after a few attempts, this one might be the one, but we will see. So to get started, I'm simply going to weigh the ingredients in the bowl of my stand mixer. And now I've talked a lot about weighing ingredients on YouTube and on my blog, but the reason why I'm weighing is because it's a little more precise and it's much more repeatable. But once this recipe is over on my blog at moonandmagnolia.com, the weight and the measurement in cups will be there for you. But I'm gonna get started with 200 grams of water. And I actually just measured out 202 grams and that is totally fine. And then I'm going to add in 100 grams of sourdough starter. And then I'll add two tablespoons of sugar, but I wanna go back to the starter for a second. So in most of my recipes, I like to work with about 50 to 100 grams of starter. It kind of depends on the recipe, but the one thing to keep in mind is that when you are adding starter to your recipes, the more starter you add, the faster it will bulk ferment. Now, of course, you don't want to add so much starter that you over ferment it or that you have to add like a pound of flour or something just to make it the right consistency. But if you are recipe testing and working on your recipes, you can experiment with how much starter you add because that can change how fast or how slow your recipe will ferment. Of course, there are other things to keep in mind like temperature but it is a way to speed things up a little bit. So I like to really stick around 100 grams just to keep things moving along. And then I'm going to add in 430 grams of bread flour. I think I'm gonna to need to add a little bit more, but we'll see as we go, as we need the bread in the stand mixer, if we need to add some more. But I do wanna note that the bread flour, I think is pretty crucial for making these buns because all purpose flour will work, but the texture is a lot better when you use bread flour and that's because it has a higher protein content content. So I think I might actually need a little more flour than 430 grams. I'm not sure yet. So I recommend if you feel like your dough is too sticky, I recommend adding flour as you're kneading it. So we'll deal with that in a few minutes. And then we're going to add a full stick of butter. Now, if you are more prepared than I am, which I bet you, you are, you'll set this out the night before and let it soften. But if you forget, don't worry, just pop it in the microwave just long enough for it to soften, but not melt. 30 seconds did the trick. And then what I like to do with my softened butter is I just like to slice it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this does help it mix in just a little bit easier. And you can see here, that's kind of hard to see. Mine's a little bit too soft, but that's okay. We just don't want it to separate out or anything like that. So if it melts a little bit, don't worry about it. So a little bit chopped up, a little bit easier for the mixer to work with, and I'll just put this right in the bowl. So then the next step is to just mix this together until it's combined. So I am using my stand mixer, and then we're simply just going to mix this together. Ladies, don't forget to pull your hair up. You just don't want that to get stuck in the mixer. I was watching a video of myself on YouTube and my hair was like that close to getting in the mixer. Don't do it, so pull your hair up. <laughs> While it's mixing, just keep an eye on it. You might need to scrape the sides of the bowl, which I do. So you can just take a silicone spatula, turn off your mixer, and just give the sides of the bowl a little scrape. And at this point, we're not really going for the dough to be perfect. It's okay if it's shaggy, but we do want the ingredients to be fully mixed in. So you can see this is combined, but it's definitely not a perfect ball of dough. And that's fine because we're going to work on the kneading and strengthening the dough in a little bit. So now I'm going to take a wet towel and cover this and let it sit for 30 minutes. So this is called autolyze. And what that does is it allows the flour to fully hydrate. This will make for a better texture in your bread and better strength in your dough. So we'll let it sit for 30 minutes and we'll back and we'll knead it and see if we need to add more flour at that point. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. So I'm going to put this in the mixer and knead it with the dough hook. Now in rich doughs like this, meaning doughs that have other ingredients like butter and eggs and sugar, for example, usually take a lot longer to knead than doughs that are not enriched. So I would anticipate this taking about 10, maybe even 15 minutes in the mixer. But along the way, the other thing that I need to see is if I need to add more flour. So let's get it going and then we'll check out the flour sitch. So 
So you can see this dough is really sticky. It's like really sticking to my hands here. And I will say I have found that a lot of enriched doughs that are like you want to be light and fluffy, they taste better with a slightly higher hydration, meaning that there's more liquid and they're a little bit sticky, but you don't want it to stick to your hands like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one tablespoon of flour at a time until it is the right consistency, where it is maybe a little bit softer and a little more hydrated, but not sticking to my hands like this. Now, one thing I do recommend, sorry, I have dough all over my hands, so it's hard for me to function is that if you are making a recipe or doing some sort of recipe testing grab a sheet of paper and pen and jot down the things that you're changing and adding and modifying because there is a 99% possibility you're going to forget what you're doing so I just keep a little tally mark along the way and each strike means one tablespoon After two tablespoons and it's a little bit better so you can see though it still is pretty sticky it's sticking to my hands but not like it was before so I think I need to add a couple more tablespoons in here but I also want to note that one way to tell if your dough is too sticky without even doing anything is to look at how it's sticking to the bowl so what you really want is for the dough to pull away from the sides of the bowl and eventually just be one ball so if you see that it's like really stuck on the bottom or the sides that's an indication it probably needs a little bit more flour. So that was three tablespoons and this is looking pretty good. So it's not sticking to my hands at all anymore, but you can tell that it still needs a little bit of kneading because the dough isn't that strong. So see how it's pulling apart and tearing like this. Now that just indicates that the gluten needs to develop more. So we are good in terms of texture and hydration and the amount of flour. Now we just let the mixer do its thing and work the dough until it passes the window pane test. I have a full tutorial on YouTube and on my blog for how to do the window pane test. So I'll link those in the description box below, but we're just gonna let this thing do its magic. In case you're wondering what I do while I'm waiting, I eat cheese. I'm really hungry. <laughs> okay, I wanna see how this dough looks, so let me get out of here. Mm, that feels really nice. So you can see this is starting to get really stretchy and pillowy, and look how much strength that has. So let's see here. Oh well, yeah, that's looking pretty good. So this is definitely passing the window pane test. Ooh, maybe not the tour a little bit. Let's give it another couple of minutes. It's really close though. Okay, let's try again. So I think this is probably getting pretty close. Oops. Oh yeah, that looks really good. So you can see this is really light and fluffy and pillowy dough. It is a little bit tacky. So you can see it kind of, it's really hard to see on here, but it kind of sticks to my hands a little bit, but there's no dough left on my hands. I have found that a high hydration dough definitely makes a delicious fluffy bread, but it is a, just a tiny bit stickier than some of the doughs that we're used to. So just make sure it's not sticking all over your hands and you'll be good. Now this goes in a clean bowl just like that. And then you can either cover this with a wet towel and let it sit at room temperature until it's doubled. I am on a time limit today, so I'm going to put it in my proofing box at 81 degrees just to speed this up. And then once it's doubled, we'll just shape it, let it go for its second rise, and then we're gonna have a delicious hamburger bun. So I'll come back when this is doubled. I almost forgot, don't forget to oil your bowl. So this is just a little spray avocado oil. You could use regular avocado oil, olive. This is just what I have right now. And this will prevent sticking to your bowl. <laughs> that's all you need. It's been about four hours and the dough is ready. So it's doubled in size. And now what I need to do is divide this up into equal portions in shape. But since I'm still testing this recipe, I'm not sure how many portions I want to divide this into. One of my complaints about a lot of homemade hamburger buns is that they are too bready. So by the time they do their second rise and bake, it's like all bread and almost no burger. So I want to err on the side of being a little bit smaller. So I'm going to cut this into eight to start and then see how it goes from there. I can always divide it again if I need to. 
So this is about equal if I cut it into eights. And I think that's pretty good. So I'm gonna shape each of these into a ball. And then what I like to do to also prevent that like really big, tall, bready burger bun is I like to make them a little wider and a little flatter. So that way there's just a better ratio of burger to bun. I like to do my second rise on the baking sheet that I'm going to bake on. And that's because once that dough doubles in size again, it gets light and fluffy, it's a little hard to handle without messing it up. So I'm gonna put the parchment paper on this sheet and then put some flour on it pretty generously and get the dough right on here. The other thing I want to do before I finalize this is I do want to make these just a little bit flatter. So I'm just really gently going to work the dough a little bit flatter so that way when they double in size, they're just a little bit wider than they are taller. Okay, so these are ready for the second proof. In hindsight, I think maybe I should have cut these in 10 pieces because they still seem a little bit thick, but I guess we'll see when they're actually done baking. And I also think I need to refine my shaping process for this a little bit, but either way, hopefully, as long as the recipe works, they're going to taste just fine. So that's the thing about sourdough. You kind of live, you learn, and even if it isn't perfect at the end, it's almost always still completely edible. I like to use a big shopping bag to cover my dough for the second rise. Sometimes you'll hear people say to use saran wrap, but I felt that the saran wrap gets a little too clingy and too tight for things to actually rise. So this works a little bit better for me and it's also free. I had to temporarily switch over to voiceover because I had a buck wild toddler in the background. So to spare you, I am on voiceover for a minute here, but I am now doing my egg wash because the dough has doubled in size. So I have one egg yolk that I'm mixing with a tablespoon of water. And this is actually a little bit of an experiment for me. This is sort of a classic egg wash, but I've always messed egg wash up. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it on a little thin and then I'm making sure I get it all the way around the sides and even just a little bit underneath. I know that's not like revolutionary or groundbreaking information for a lot of you, but I have a tendency to do this where the egg wash ends up pulling around the edges and it's not delicious or beautiful. But then I also sprinkled half of this with sesame seeds and then half with everything bagel seasoning. And just a spoiler alert, they're both delicious, but I really like the everything bagel seasoning. These baked in the oven at 375 degrees for I think 25 minutes. I started at 20, but that wasn't quite enough. 25 seemed about right. And I think next time I might even sprinkle a little bit of coarse salt on top of them because I think they'll be really good. That's what made the everything bagel seasoning so good was that little bit of added salt. Normally I'd advise you to wait until they're completely cool to cut them open, but I was just dying to see what these looked like inside. And they are like a pillow, like a dream. They're so light and so fluffy and they are delicious. My husband and child stole the other half of this bun, but you can see it is light and fluffy and airy. The one thing I think I would do differently next time is I think I would make this recipe into 10 or 12 buns instead of eight. Now that's personal preference. I just prefer a smaller, thinner bun for my burgers, but you could totally do eight if that's what you want. But for me, I think I'd split it into 10 or 12, but otherwise I think I finally got this recipe right. So you can find this recipe over my blog at moonandmagnolia.com. It'll have all the adjustments that I made today and some new suggestions and you can get it all there. Also. If you want to start a sourdough journey and you don't know where to begin, check out the link in the description box below for my free ebook. It's 30 pages of how to make a sourdough starter, what to do with your starter, how to make your first loaf of bread and discard recipes. And once you get that starter going, you can easily make this recipe. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's crazy good.